But meanwhile, we discuss hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and let me explain. While exercising outside his home last summer, Miles Frost, the son of the late broadcaster Sir David Frost, collapsed and died aged 31. Now, Miles' death was because of that condition, a heart condition, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which causes heart muscles to swell and block the flow of blood to the rest of the body. Miles never knew he had it, and it was only revealed in the autopsy. When his family started investigating, they discovered that Sir David had the condition too and was also unaware of it. Although David didn't die of this condition, known to doctors as hokum when he passed away at the age of 74, in 2013. The family say if they'd had the information, all his three sons would have been tested to see if they had it too. And if that had happened, they could then have done something about it and Miles might well be here today. The condition affects one in 500 of us. You may remember it caused the footballer Fabrice Muamba to collapse on the pitch in 2012 and led to his immediate retirement. Well, Miles Frost's younger brother, Wilfred, joins us from the US where he's the anchor of a television show, Worldwide Exchange. We're going to hear from Dr. Sarah Jarvis, our resident health expert, too. So we'd love to talk about whether somebody in your family has been affected by the, this condition. But first, let's, let's find out about Miles Frost from Wilfred. Good afternoon to you. Very good morning to you from uh, New York, and a good afternoon to you. Hi, and obviously I'm very sorry about what has happened here. Did you have any signs of this in your brother? Uh, no, not at all, and, and that's the uh, the sort of worrying thing about this condition. The fact, as you said, one in 500 people in the UK have it, so up to 120,000 people could be living with it right now, but they won't be aware of it, as we weren't with Miles. And in fact, Miles, quite the opposite, had become super fit in the last couple of years of his life. So uh, on the surface, you had no idea at all. And your father had it too, but did not die of it? That's right. He, he died of... of uh, a pulmonary aneurysm, a sort of more regular heart attack, if you will. The autopsy, the post-mortem, did identify that he had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or HCM, but, you know, crucially, it wasn't the cause of death, so that observation was relegated to page two or three of the post-mortem, and it wasn't flagged to us as being a, a crucial hereditary condition that we needed to be tested for And, well. and your, your father, David Frost's post-mortem, was not in this country either, was it? So maybe there was a, an issue there. Yeah, there, there was a confluence of factors, the, the, the crucial one being it wasn't the cause of his death. As you say, also, he, he died on a ship. The uh, post-mortem took place where it first port, uh, ported in, in Lisbon in Portugal, and it also took a long time to reach us as well. So there were a number of factors, but actually the key thing as we look at the UK is there isn't an immediate process that snaps into place at the moment within the NHS across the UK if somebody in a family is identified as having HCM or one of a few other hereditary heart conditions that can affect the young. And that's what needs to change because the science to identify these conditions exists. Uh, it just needs to be applied. The action doesn't uh, exist yet. Can you tell us a bit more about Miles, your brother? And I know he was very young. Yes, he was. He was 31 and... Um, my brothers and I were very close in age. We were sort of inseparable. George just turned 29, so this would be the sort of three months of the year each year where we are, 29, 30, 31. So very close in age, and we were inseparable. And Miles really was the kind of older brother in in all the best ways. He, he didn't impose his, uh, his wills on us. He just led by example, and we followed. And uh, he really got... George and I through the first 30 years of our lives. I don't think either of us would be half the people we are right now, if not for miles. And and he got into fitness, did he, in his in his late 20s? Was he was he super fit? Yeah, well, no, we were all very active growing up. Uh, we adored sport. We weren't very good at it, but we tried very hard. Um, and Miles just, uh, I think, picked that up a level in the last couple of years. He, he did uh, a marathon. He did a half marathon in Kenya as well. And... Uh, yeah, th th we were always active, but he certainly had picked up a level and, and started pushing himself more. And on that very morning, he he'd had pushed himself to the extreme. And that's where the risk is. You know, if, if you can identify it, uh, much like Fabrice Muamba, you, you have to change your way of life. He retired and, and Miles, if he'd known about it, clearly wouldn't have been pushing himself to that extent anymore. But he would still crucially be around. So people who, who die from HCM tend to die when they are exerting, is that right? That's right, exactly. And, and the exact uh, medical mechanics, you probably should ask Dr. Sarah Jarvis about a bit more, but it, uh, 
that the heart grows in a way that the wall thickens rather than, say, strengthens efficiently um, when they're training and, and pushing themselves. And, and in fact, that means that it becomes less efficient at pumping blood around the body, though you get no signs of it because you're an otherwise fit and healthy person until a moment just snaps and, and either the electrical currents or the blockages from the thick wall, they just don't get transmitted properly. And, and suddenly you, you can have a, a heart failure uh, that that was totally unbeknown to, to, to you being in terms of a possibility. As a result of this tragedy, where does that leave you and your brother, Wilfred? Well, b because it's now been identified, we've been tested. So, so we're, we're fine, uh, which, is, which is great to know. Meaning um, you don't have it? We don't have it, so, so we're okay. And uh, my little brother's, in fact, taking on a big uh, bike ride in a few months to try and raise money which uh, I'm traveling for, I can't do, but uh, he's, he's, he's taking on a physical exertion, which certainly you wouldn't be able to do if, if you weren't okay. But no, we're fine. We don't have it, which is great to know and, and reassuring. And uh, other relatives are being tested as well to make sure they don't have it because it is hereditary with a 50% chance of being passed on. Um, you know, if you were identified as having it, there isn't a cure yet for it, but it's totally manageable depending on the, the level of uh, seriousness of, of the condition you have. You can go as far as having a defibrillator installed or taking drugs or just if it's not too too serious, you, you would just be told not to do things like running marathons or sprinting long distance. You'd have to do, if you wanted to stay active, things like yoga instead, for example. But it's certainly very manageable. And, you know, the example of... Uh, Fabrice Murambas is a great one, or, or James Taylor more recently, the cricketer, he had a slightly different type of cardiomyopathy. I'm sure both of them, and I don't want to speak in their place, but I'm sure both of them would much rather be aware to have to retire, albeit that's a shame, from the sport they love, but, but continue to live their lives because, you know, that's a much better eventuality. Thank you very much for joining us. Wilfred Frost, brother of the late Miles Frost, son of Sir David Frost. Talking about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, HCM, some doctors call it hokum, which can cause sudden heart attack in somebody who appears very athletic, very fit, and who is young. We'll discuss this more with Dr. Sarah Jarvis in just a moment. 20 past one, Jeremy Vine here, BBC Radio 2. Good afternoon to Dr. Sarah Jarvis. Good afternoon. Very sad what the Frost family have been through, isn't it? Definitely because losing sad. David and then Miles. Yeah. And I think what's really sad is that, as David pointed out, this is what's called autosomal dominant. In other words, you inherit two genes, one from each parent. If one of your parents has got it and they give you the bad gene, then you will get the disease. So basically you have a one in two chance of getting it if one of your parents has got it. And of so course... Right. With, with, uh, let's call it HCM. With mm. this particular heart condition, you either have it or you don't. Is that right? E effectively, the vast you can't have half of these of it. are inherited. No, you don't inherit some lots of conditions. You know, you can inherit a few freckles um, or, or, or a whole face full sort of thing. And it can be modified. Whereas this, this tends to be all or nothing. OK. And you were just during that record explaining it very well to me. The heart muscle when it strengthens, takes up space in the heart, basically, Absolutely. and unbalances it. So effectively, what happens with HOCAM or HCM, HOCAM is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. It's a sort of subversion of it. But with HCM, basically, hyper means over, trophy means growth. So the heart muscle overgrows. It gets too thick. Now, you'd have thought, because we spend so much of our time saying, oh, build up your muscle strength, that that was a good thing. But of course, what happens if the muscle is growing not in the right way, then Firstly, it can get grow in the wrong places, so it can actually block some of the valves, so you can get leaky valves, or you can get blood which can't get through the valves, either to get in or to get out. So, for instance, some people will find that the blood is being pushed out beautifully, but it can't get through the valve because it's being blocked, so you're not getting enough blood going to the rest of the circulation. Or you can get abnormal heart rhythms. So normally this very slick machinery that is in place, incredibly clever, the way the heart rhythms or the heart electrical impulses spread over the top of the top valve the top uh, uh, the atria they're called the top chambers of the heart and then they move down into the middle so that you can squash up from the bottom getting all the heart of the blood out round the rest of the body that just goes completely to pieces sometimes in these people so that's when you tend to get symptoms later on but the problem we've got is that because the muscle on the whole is contracting normally then many people don't get any symptoms and it is in until the day like, they die until the day they die wow. especially in young people and there are some other rare syndromes that's something called Brugge Garda syndrome. There are some other rare conditions, but this is absolutely one where if I have a patient who's been diagnosed with it, it is absolutely 
first on my list to make sure that they're first degree relatives. In other words, parents, brothers and sisters, children have been checked for it too. But it, it goes counter to everything we, we understand, doesn't it? So it, you don't you give up football for a start. Yep. Don't strengthen your your stamina don't go running is that right because because well, as your heart strengthens the muscle grows takes up space and then it can't pump the blood well that doesn't necessarily count because it's not strengthening because it's exercising it's strengthening because you've inherited a tendency so you can still do exercise what we get in sudden death and especially in young athletes it's possible, who knows, that tragic death during the London Marathon of a young soldier who was a relatively young soldier who died suddenly. It's possible that they had the same thing. Mm. What tends to happen is that you get a sudden stoppage because of an abnormal heart rhythm when you are exercising excessively. So it's people who are very fit who are running marathons where this tends to happen. It's not usually people who are doing gentle jogs. Right.